Out of the fog of a chilly morning's dawn, a great city shakes off sleep and drowsily comes to life to begin another day like so many others in its history. And yet the city lives with a constant threat, the remote but real possibility of a great disaster. Francisco, a glory, a prize, a sparkling jewel of a city, where the very air seems to vibrate with a sense of life. cities, it has drawn together men and women from many places, many backgrounds. 700,000 people live here. During the working day, that number swells with the bustle of over a million. And yet, a specter walks these streets shoulder to shoulder with the people. For San Francisco lives nearby one of the most severe earthquake faults in all the world. July 1972, a new kind of satellite leaps toward orbit. A satellite designed to keep an eye on the Earth, take its pulse and its picture. In the years that follow, the satellite radios back vast quantities of data that enrich our understanding of subjects from pollution to mining, from fishing to farming to flood control. Could it as well help bring a better understanding of earthquakes? That was a subject for which the spacecraft held little promise. But time would tell a different story. The satellite looks down on an Earth that is constantly changing, as it has changed through all time. Enormous pressures from deep within shove against the Earth's rocky crust. The ground gives way, bending to a new shape. And still the pressure continues, until at last the rock splits apart, usually along an already weakened area called a fault line. Periodically, the people of California get a gruesome reminder of what can happen when the Earth suddenly moves. San Francisco, 1906, 517 AM.
It's only been lately that scientists have begun to understand what an earthquake really is. An earthquake is simply the shaking of the ground due to natural causes. This little escarpment that I'm walking along here came into existence. Dr. Clarence Allen, professor of geology and geophysics at the California Institute of Technology, tells of a recent quake. We can actually see down here where my hand is the actual fault plane. Fault plane that extends many miles down into the earth where the earthquake actually started. Now, what causes earthquakes? This green strip represents a valley carved along the San Andreas Fault. And these three black strips represent three fences that were built across the fault many years ago. Fences which gradually become deformed or bent because of the horizontal movement of the valley walls at a rate of perhaps one or two inches every year. After years of movement, the rocks finally yield to the enormous stress and break apart. This is an earthquake. Earthquakes don't just happen on dry land. They happen as well on the ocean floor. The rocks crack under the enormous stress until one section of the ocean floor springs suddenly upward. The water above it is thrust.